think you're, I don't even think you should be out here. I think you're just somebody that wanted to come up here and say, I'm a professional wrestler. There's a thousand people out here, a hundred thousand people want to get in the limelight. And you say, you come out and say, first thing I want to know, what gives you the right to even be out here? Go Have ahead, you ever beat Jim. anybody? Have Jim, you ever beat anybody? Answer. I, I don't even know. Answer, man. Go ahead, Jim. Well, number one, uh, because of my sexual persuasion, uh, well, and gay? the fact <laughs> the, the fact that I didn't want to participate. Uh, in, in he's, that light, he's been it, in the business 15 years, and that never happened to him. How come it happened to you? Hey, maybe I mean, he didn't and, like him. And he's not he's not maybe any the prettier than you are. Like him. Huh? I guess the promoter didn't like him that way. Did he like you? He must have. Did you kiss him? Did you, you know, he, you know he's, he's, did you ever wrestle? Did you ever wrestle? Did I what? Did you wrestle, Jim? Of course I wrestled. You did wrestle? you win anything? I've wrestled and I've been in the business since 1968. How many matches have you had? A couple thousand. A couple thousand? Dr. D, sounds like... Uh, I've never heard of him. You never heard of him? I've never heard of him. What name did you wrestle under? Show under? His I, I wrestled under my own name. All right, let me, let, let me ask you then. Anyone who watches wrestling knows that with, uh, you know, two big guys colliding in the ring, they can hurt each other. But you say that a promoter forced you to hurt yourself in the ring with a blade job. Now, what is a blade job? Well, he, it's, it's not a matter... I'm glad it said blade because after your first thing, I was... Hmm, kind of a job it was. It, it, it's... I was told that when I was in Australia, I was overseas. And because I wouldn't go to bed with this, with this guy... Again? Another no, guy? that was you? the first time. Okay. The first and only time. He told his booker to make me What'd you start say, losing hooker? matches. Did, you, did he say hooker? And did he say hooker? I think he said booker, Doc. Okay, I'm, uh, I didn't... I thought do you know you, what a booker is? What, uh, do I know what a booker is? Do you know what is? a booker is? I know what a booker is. I know what a fool is. I know what a liar is and a goof. And you're a liar and a goof. And well, I don't think you can yeah. wrestle. You never could. I still, Jim, I still don't That's, know what the blade job is. Tell me what that well, is. A blade job is where they want you to bleed. So you're in the and fight. I, and I told him I wouldn't do it. And he said, you're not going to... What are you supposed to do? Cut yourself with the blade? Right, exactly, to produce the blood. And because you carry a little capsule and break it if you want. No, nah, that's they, that, that that I don't know whether that ever happened or not in the business. But the way they do it now is with a blade. I think you're a liar on that too. I've never used what you call a blade or anything else, and I can make you bleed in less than two seconds. I'll hit you so hard. <laughs> Dave, let me ask you a question. Doc doctor, you wrestled. Did you ever have the uncontrollable urge to carve yourself up or to cut yourself or to rip your mouth no. open? Do anything? No, no. Did any promoter ever ask you to do that? I never had to do no that. Promoter ever asked you no. To do that. no promoter ever asked me then to do that. No, no promoter ever asked me to do that. Then why is Jim Wilson okay. the only guy okay. that this has ever Okay, he's the only guy. No, there's another one, too, a little goop by the name of... In my opinion, you and him probably made love together and come on the show and try to destroy the business because you're not a man. You never have been a man. You never will be a man. Your whole life is ruined, boy. You ought to go out here somewhere on the, on the West Coast. I won't mention the city, but you can go out there and hold hands with whoever you want to. But you climb in the ring, a professional wrestling ring, they'll tie your head up and stick it up your behind and send you on your way. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see. Sir, your name. My name's Dennis Carluzzo, and I'm a promoter. All right. And I want to say one thing. For years, wrestling has had that stigma about it with this guy's crying. But it's going to stop you people from going? No. So what are you trying to prove? Yeah. Here. Another thing. Let me explain something about this guy's background. You want to expose the business a little bit? Let's talk a term about you. You were nothing but a bottom of the card jobber. You had excuses for not making it in the NFL. You had excuses for not making it in pro wrestling. And you're going to have more excuses when this falls on your face. What are you trying to prove? You're coming out here going on circuit, yeah. huh? Second. Wait a second. On this show, Jim's damn well entitled to say what he's trying to prove. Go ahead. Well, everybody has an opinion, obviously, and uh, these gentlemen have theirs. Uh, this is America. Well, I know all that. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> that, that's fine. Well, well, that's, that's, that's fine. Good. If that's... I could arrange a match between you two guys, would that be all right? Yes, with sir. You? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Would you take your mind? I'll put up the money. You'll put up the money? Anytime. Anytime. No. Right now. Right yeah, now. Right 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 now. Right
Tell me, I want to go. I want to go to Paul Dangerously on the telephone. Paul, can you hear me, buddy? Yes, I can, Mort. Paul, let me ask you a question. You've been listening to this uh, stuff. Yes, I have. All right. You listen to Jim Wilson's life story. What do you make of his statement that he was basically blackballed from wrestling? Uh, <laughs> Jim Wilson was blackballed from wrestling, and that is the truth, and I'll tell you why right now. Because he was such a loser, he never drew a dime in his life, and nobody ever wanted to pay the sale. The fact is, Mort, that the wrestling business is exactly like television. If you don't produce ratings, I don't care how good looking you are, I don't care how many cigarettes you smoke, I don't care what producers you sleep with, you're off the air. Jim Walk Wilson easy, Paul. With everybody. Uh-uh. He never drew a dime, and they said, get out of the business. You're a loser. How much money did you make in wrestling? How much money did you make in wrestling, Jim? I didn't make a lot of money. Though, uh, well, you said you've had a couple thousand matches. Yeah, the, the, the best uh, trip that I had was to Australia for $800 a week back in 1973. Ooh. 800 bucks a week in Australia? Right, and they cut that, like I say, when I wouldn't go to bed uh, with the promoter, they uh, wanted... Come, I have never, Jim, look at baby, I gotta tell you, pal, you are not that sexually attractive, even... <laughs> That's right. Why is That's someone right. I want to go to bed with? Hey, like I say, uh, I don't know what turns those people on, you know, uh, the, those people of that persuasion. Uh, I'll tell you what, next we're going to meet the world's strangest man. I think, I, I, I think I'll let this man say any damn thing he wants. Stand by. Ken is all business on that bench. And watch this. He has done it again. This is truly one of the most electrifying moments in the history of powerlifting. Ken Arcidi has just lifted 705 pounds on the bench. Let's find out about racism and all these other things that we hear about in professional wrestling. Let me introduce you to a gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Claude Thunderbolt Patterson, former pro wrestler. Thunderbolt, how you doing, pal? Very good, and you? I'm all right. You think you had a talent uh, to be the world champion, right? Yes, I do. Okay. What kept you from reaching the top of the wrestling game? Well, the promoters. Just that simple. Why? Well, what would they do? Just promoters. I mean, uh, uh, who, who, as a black individual, you are limited. Just that simple. As a black individual, you're limited. In you wrestling. wrestled in the 60s and 70s. 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay, in the 60s and 70s, I understand you made, uh, from a quote in one of the magazines, you made fifty to $100,000 a year. Well, they quoted me as making two, 225000 a year. 225000 Did you make that much? No. Yeah, how much did you really make? I made a hundred. Made a hundred thousand dollars. Let me see. If my memory supports me right, that would be the days of uh, Argentine Rocca, Buddy Rogers. Well, that's a little bit before. That was a little bit before my time. Well, that was a little bit before your yeah, time. Right. Seems to me anyone making a hundred thousand dollars in the uh, 1960s wasn't really discriminated against. Well, I mean, it's a matter of opinion. You know what I mean? Like. Well, everything's a matter of opinion. Yeah, well, you know, uh, like my 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 whole thing is that uh, I drew money all over the country I mean, people came to see you yes i worked in a lot of the different places around the, around the country yeah. and i drew money and uh i just wanted the same chance that the rest of them was getting some me anyone making a hundred thousand dollars in uh, 1960s wasn't really discriminated against well I mean, it's a matter of opinion you know what i mean like well everything's a matter of opinion yeah, well you know like my, my my whole thing is that uh i drew money all over the country. I mean, people came to see you. Yes, I worked in a lot of the different places around the, around the country, yeah. and I drew money. And uh, I just wanted the same chance that the rest of them was getting, something that I didn't Hey, Dr. Get. D. You had more than a chance, chance, man. I'm That's from your opinion. South. Yeah, my That's opinion. opinion. I was you were good, the buddy. Individual. Atlanta, Georgia. You, you were was the individual. I was the first match, buddy. That's the right. first match. Make you it was the first match. That came along. You, you walked out. You, you didn't, didn't 
didn't show up for the mess. You did not show up for the mess. You walked out. You I walked out, walked out, out because, because I was mistreated, just like all the and rest of them. And just because you're black, black, you think somebody should kneel That's down? Your problem. Problem. No, they ain't gonna That's your problem. No, they ain't You went on. You was able to. Sour grapes. Sour grapes. That's all I had. Sour grapes. Yeah, my opinion. You're the one. Sour grapes. What you have here is, I was the individual, I was in, I was all over the country. I drew money. Yes, I walked out. Why did you draw money? I, wait a minute. No, you, I ain't waiting a minute. I, I drew no, you money drew money because the they give you the top I walked spot. out they give you because a push. of individuals they give you just the like of you. The world champion and you blew Individuals it, just like you. you. Terry Funk you beat you in Atlanta, Georgia, right in the just middle like of the him, and you walked out. take on the company side. Just because you're black, you think somebody owes you something. Nobody owes don't you know, nothing. Don't, don't, nobody, don't nobody owe me nothing. All I need is a chance and I would have got it myself. Well, why didn't you do it? Because of individuals just like you. I was on the first match that night, baby, Atlanta, Georgia, 1978. And you walked out. You didn't show up. Why Kim Barnett was a promoter. Right, why, 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 you why, why, walked out. You wanted to hold him up for more money. Oh, you're you a liar. No, you're he's a liar. You're a liar. You've been a liar since I know you. Just a second. Let me hear from him. Why? Why did you walk out? Why did you walk out? Why? Can I say one thing before I change? Tell me why you walked out. I walked out because my money wasn't right and they wasn't treat me right. Now, you got an individual here. He just told you that it was his his first match in the town. Now, how in the hell did he know so much about it? I kept going, okay, baby. Because I kept going. Was, I worked uh, the first match, and then I was up on top. You were guys in the business. The guy paid his dues. He you paid his dues. What'd you say? He paid his dues. That's right. I climbed the ladder, baby. I climbed the ladder. He just told you that he was working for 50 bucks, 35 bucks every night. 15 bucks. I didn't shoot steak. No more. I worked for five. I worked for nothing. But I went to the top. I'm your OG title, baby. Let me introduce you, let me introduce you to the world's strongest man, all right? Good to see you. World's champion, baby. And as the critics will say tomorrow when they saw him carrying in a 180-pound load of You missed me. Okay, I'm sure we'll beep that out for you folks. Ted, let me ask you a question. You've competed at the highest levels, all right, of bodybuilding and, uh, and now wrestling. Have you Powerful, encountered yeah. a prejudice against performers because of the color of their skin? And have you been alert <clears throat> to see if that prejudice is out there? Because there is prejudice. Okay, I'm college educated. All right, let me just drop a few names. Prejudice, no, it's a cop-out, okay? Anybody heard of Tony Atlas? Yeah. All right. Anybody, anybody ever heard of S.D. Jones? Yeah. Anybody ever heard of Rocky Johnson? Yeah. I think this guy... You should have paid attention more in school. You would have been in a better business. Look, Harry, look, Harry, let me explain something to you, muscles. Oh, okay, just because you got muscles, oh, you went I over into the professional, and I mean, that ain't the whole thing. Okay, you got to know how thing? to wrestle a little what's bit. The whole thing? And you got to know how to draw a little money. You called Tony That's right, Adams, I drew money. You called uh, uh, S.T. Jones. Right. You called individuals, just like we have in the country today, that go along with any damn thing that go on. Yeah, but they had the WWF World title. They had the WWF World title. They go along with anything that was a WWF World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, both of them, buddy. You didn't make it, they did. It's just like you. They started working out 50 bucks a night. I gave away. I gave away more than. Listen to this. Listen to what I'm going to say. I gave away. I gave away more belts than both of you fellas probably ever had. You're a liar. Because you are the first time I've ever had 18 You are a liar yourself, man. But you don't know what the hell you told me. You gave away 18. You ain't never gave nothing away. You'll never give nothing away. First place, you ain't never had nothing to give away. Yeah. On the count of individuals just like you, every, every, every system. Let me say something here. I was in a preliminary match in Greenville, South Carolina, when this man was on top, 
and he wouldn't even talk to me and the captain. He was a hot, hot shot main event guy. Me and the captain got six bits. If you don't understand six bits, that's $75. And that's what we got. And Thunderbolt Patterson was the main event guy. Come in 10 minutes before showtime. Exactly. And he looked at the preliminary boys. And he said, uh, are, they working here tonight? are they working here tonight? I said, yes, sir. How are you? I shook his hand. I didn't care if he was black, green, yellow, orange, or whatever color he might be. But I had a tough time. And I was happy. I was happy when you shook hands with me. Well, I was right. glad. You, and your damn you, color didn't mean a damn thing. Oh, you are, about. you are a, 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 a very, let's shake hands again. And me and the cat, I'll shake hands, hands again, with you right. anytime. Because there's a whole lot of individuals. And this guy that pretend. When she'll tell you the same story. That pretend. That's it. That they are. Not prejudiced. Gorgeous now, George walked out 20, the dressing room. I spent 20 years. Rubs down. I spent 20 years in professional wrestling. No kidding. I That's spent right. 28. Good. Well, yeah, you spent eight more than I did. Yeah, you, so you were right. guy. And started. it was a preliminary but boy when is, you came in. But it's a whole lot of folks that I did jump to. You have. favorite in wrestling today, Captain Lou Albano. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show, furnished by Redwood Limousine. When in New York, call 212-226-7665. A new edition, shut up, zip it, a new edition on home base, all right? Yeah. Connected with wrestling like nobody else has ever been. Wrestling's ambassador, he served as a pro wrestler, a promoter, manager, a movie star. I mean, you go on it, he's got it all. Lou Albano, the captain. Yeah. You've been listening to everything that's been going on in the show. Mr. Wilson here has, uh, was just applauding you. It means even he has respect for you, Well, I'm not for you, right? his applause. I'm not even looking for I want to say something more. No, let me involved. ask you, let me ask right you something, ahead. all right? You, you identify with professional wrestling as much as anybody in America right, has been. Does the discussion we've been having tonight bear any resemblance to the wrestling that you've known? Let me tell you something, Mort. The discussion that's going on here tonight is utterly ridiculous. I've been involved in wrestling since 1953. And I'll admit that today there's a little bit getting away from the wrestling, a little bit of showmanship and so forth, but to me they're still the world's greatest athletes. When a guy comes out here like this, like this half-wit, and a guy like that moaning about black, I started in with Bobo Brazil, with Bearcat Wright, with Black Boy Sweet Daddy Seeky, and they made something, and let me tell you something, let me tell you something, you... Yeah, go ahead. But look here, you started in with every one of them individuals, you stayed, you stayed around, each one of them individuals had to pack their suitcase and leave, but you no, stayed there and made them money. that's hey, not man, true. You just that cat right wrestled, that cat right wrestled, he died. That cat right died he and died. passed away. He died because Bobo he couldn't get a job. Bobo was, was, Brazil was used by couldn't the Couldn't get a job, couldn't get booked no nowhere. Years ago. Well, in fact, couldn't get Just booked. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bobo was wait a minute. Question. I want to hear All right, I'm on the board. Just a minute. Bobo Brazil wrestled right here in the Meadowlands in the old timers day a few years ago. Wrestling was good to Bobo. He was one of the favorite guys of Willie Gilsenberg and Vince McMahon. And as far as this halfwit talking about blades, my wife was sitting out there that I've been married to for 34 years. If I were to use a, uh, an object to cut my face, she'd divorce me tomorrow. Let me tell you this. Sure. Anytime I wrestle, sure as hell wouldn't want that pretty face. Well, you ain't kidding. No. Now, anytime. All right. Anytime I wrestle. I drew money. And uh, I just wanted the same chance that the rest of them was getting. So just a minute. Bobo Brazil wrestled right here in the Meadowlands in the old timers day a few years ago. Wrestling was good to Bobo. He was one of the favorite guys of Willie Gilsenberg and Vince McMahon. And as far as this halfwit talking about blades, my wife was sitting out there that I've been married to for 34 years. If I were to use a, uh, an object to cut my face, 
should divorce me tomorrow. Let me tell you this. Sure. Anytime I wrestle... You sure as hell wouldn't want that pretty face. Well, you ain't kidding. No. Now, anytime... All right. Anytime I wrestled and I got beat, I was beat by a better man. I'll tell you that now. And anytime I got bleeding or blood, it was when I was in a steel cage match and they took my fat face and ran it up against a 12-foot steel cage. That's how I got this. That's how I got that. Not from using nothing. So this man's a liar and I don't believe it. Wait a second, wait a second. Jim, Jim, you have been ominously silent through all of this, well, all right? I haven't been ominously silent. I've just been listening to everybody. The, the thing about it, and, oh. and I was applauding <laughs> Lou and, and, and I don't want your applause. I don't, okay, don't, don't want to hear that. Either. I want to hear what you got to well, say. No, no, that's fine. What we're talking about is the money in the business, Mort. That's right. You couldn't draw flies, brother. That's right. Testify, it's, brother. He can't yeah. draw flies if you, if you yeah. give you him... You want to know something, Lord? Uh, I was in the business. Sure. I wrestled. David, I wrestled for 20 years. I never made no big money because I wasn't that good a wrestler. Then I got in and started managing, and I was manager of 17 tag team champions, two in a continental and one world champion. I didn't make money of that. But as a wrestler, I was still Lou Albano. I wasn't capable of drawing money. I never made the money of the legendary Bruno Jim. San Martino and wrestled Jim. like that. Jim, what are you talking about, money? Jim's got something on his lap here. No, it's, it's, Don't read the whole damn thing to me. What no, is it? No, what, what I was getting to more was the money in the business. And the proportionate amount of money that trickles down to the performers is nowhere commensurate to what all of us have been put handout? into. A handout? Is, is that what you want, a handout? Nobody say, wants a handout. Are you sure you, you want a handout? You want a handout because you're oh, fair, meals, and hotel. David, David. We'll admit, we want promoters, we admit the promoters, we don't want to call you more angels, Mort. We'd like the boys to have hospitalization, we'd like to benefit things and all, but there's money out there to be made. If a guy's a good athlete, if he can do it right, he can draw money. There were wrestlers like, again, I mentioned the name of Bruno San Martino. They got right out there and now, they didn't like him, why? Because he was Italian, he drew money, yet I was Italian, I didn't draw no money. As a, as a wrestler, as a manager, I did my share. All right, so let me ask no you a question. Let me they're ask you a question. Athletes. No, no. All right. Let me let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Let's ask, let's ask the question, all right, that every American who's seen wrestling matches asks. Go ahead. Do you guys know who's going to win before the match starts? Well, I can tell you right now, I made the statement before. Every time I got beat, I got beat by a better man. I don't know what goes on throughout the entire world of wrestling, I can't say, but what I will say, they're overmatched. You never see a Hulk Hogan up against a Ric Flair. You never see a Bruno San Martino against a Hulk Hogan. They know now probably David Schultz can whip my tail. So if I go in with David Schultz, he'll just beat me when he can. I don't know of any pre arranged No one ever are came to sure? me. And said are they the, sure that Dr. D could wick Jim? Yes, I'm Wilson. sure. I'm sure. Well, I'm, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure. Huh? I'm sure if I were I don't a promoter, think Jim Wilson, if I, were sure. a promoter, I wouldn't have to tell Jim Wilson to lose. Because when Dr. D was ready to beat him, he whipped him with an inch of his life. That's right. And I can do it now. I'm sure. I'll do it right here in front of everybody. Come on, come on. Let me go to a lady who's a hell of a lot prettier than you are. Right? This is Lou Albano. You want to say something? I guess I can be as good as witness as anyone else. Uh, Lou came home pretty battered a lot of times, and uh, it was for real, from what I could see. He's had broken back, there you go, broken wrist. Face. Look at the nose. His nose Cracked has been broken back so many times. Tell me that's a fake. How many and stitches have you had? Over 700 stitches in plastic surgery done, and here's my nose, no bone, my back three times, my hand's broken. And let me tell you something, this guy's trying to knock wrestling, but people are still calling. Because I gotta, wait a minute, boy. And I that gotta... was from promoting. All right, now listen to this. I've got a number right now, 1-900-909 for Lou. And over 125 to 150,000 people a month call me on my line. And David Fernoli right there is the coordinator of that show. On WrestleMania Day, 278,000 people called the line. So the interest is there, and half foot morons like this, with the brain of a dehydrated BB, yeah. if they put his face in a pirate here, so I'm not going to do All right. Jim, 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 Jim you've got... Let me, here, Dad, Lou, get up in the Lou, get up. Yes, sir. let me go to Jim for a go second, ahead, because he's called wrestling a soap opera for stuntmen. Did the promoters tell you when to lose or win? More, let, let me just, Did they tell you when to lose or win? Let me quote Vince McMahon, okay? Both of these gentlemen, I believe, have worked for Vince McMahon. Is yes, that sir, right? I have worked for Okay, great. All right, good. That's right. You right. wasn't good fine, enough. Fine, fine. Thank you. If they really... They wanted to ask... Give it they, to me fast, baby. If they, the matches hour. were predetermined, I'm going to try to read you a quote All right. by All the right. Associated Press that Vince McMahon gave to the Associated Press. Supposedly. Okay? 
Yeah. Supposedly, it's right here. So, I mean, it, you believe it, everything it, you see them reading? If they really did the things it looks like they're doing to each other, there would be a lot of dead wrestlers, McMahon told the Associated Press. Okay? Look, look. now here, here, answer here, here. my question. Did they ever ask you to win or lose a match? Yes, every they, night. Ha! Every night. Absolutely. Who? Who? Who asked you to do that? Which one? Which one are you talking Which about? Which one are you Junior. talking about? Junior? No, that's a lie. You're a liar. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Liar. You're a liar. I personally... Martin, Martin, Martin. I, I am not a personal friend of Vince McMahon Jr. I worked for his dad for 35 years, the greatest promoter in the world I ever knew. But this McMahon Jr. and I had our differences. But I do not believe that he meant that statement the way he's talking about it. He's saying there is a certain amount of showmanship in professional wrestling, which we don't deny. But he means that some of the things that happen in there, at times, a man is not out to kill. He wants to win, but he doesn't try to kill his opponent. No. But yet sometimes they get carried away. No. And what McMahon was trying to stress, that it is the top athletes in the world today, right. and one of the greatest athletes right. ever lived, professional right. wrestling. So don't ever believe yeah. this man right here, because he's a liar. We're going to come back in just a minute. We're going to come back and we're going to look into the deep heart and soul of wrestling, my friends. We're going to talk to one of the great teachers. Stand by. Introduce, let me introduce, all right, right now, let me introduce a loudmouth number two, pretty boy Larry Sharp. He's the owner of the Monster Factory. Where some of the best, some of the best wrestlers are trained. Let me come back to Jim for just a second. You claim that the kingpins of wrestling like Vince McMahon uh, and TV tycoon Ted Turner, all right, uh, effectively blackball wrestlers who don't play by their rules. Not true. Did you, did Not they true. throw you out of the ring? Did they what? Throw you out of the ring? In, in essence, they did. They kept us out of the ring. And what they did, Mort, in 1974, uh, and T-Bolt and I were together doing this, That's trying to elevate the position, nice elevate the position of the performers. Number one, which is the bottom line of, of everything elevate we're talking about. How, Jim? Money, money and benefits, a shared equity in the billion dollar a year pie that is not being distributed equitably you want be somebody to give you something for nothing again no, no we you don't, don't want to work for it how do you want to share it by setting up a union we uh, wait a minute wait, it wouldn't be a bad wait idea a to have benefits for the boys and stuff uh, like that but you're not going to go about it the way you're talking about there's money to be made out there. Maybe they can turn around and take $10 out of each boy's pay as he wrestles and have the promoter match that, sit down at the bargaining table with the promoter, and it's maybe they wouldn't be better idea, for the boys. No, the better How idea... How come they threw him out? I can the, say that to the, a promoter. The, How come he can't? The better idea is because we are putting our bodies on the line no, no, every no, night. Whoa, 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 whoa. You no, ain't put wait. your body nowhere. I've been putting my you body on the line. Crying. You're crying. crying. Man, you ain't never done nothing to nobody. This guy's crying. Let me tell you, I went to the top. In every league, AWA, NWA, WWF, I've been there. I made the money, and I was kicked out. But you don't hear me out here crying about it. I didn't need no benefits. Right. I had money. Right. I could buy what I wanted because I was good. I produced, and I did hey, folks, And I ain't crying about it. You're the one crying about it. If anyone out here... You're a piece of shit. That's a shit. You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of garbage. All right, doctor. All right, doctor. All right, doctor. Well, I wish you'd get up. All right, doctor. Sit down. I wish you'd get up. I'll pull your eyes out. I'll pull your eyes out. All right, doctor. Sit down. You hear me? Wait a second. I want to come down here. Okay, doctor. Pretty boy. Pretty boy. Now, this is the guy who's trained more wrestlers, all right, more champions in your monster factory, is what he says. Hey, Doc, look down here a second. I need you, doctor, pal. Doctor, hey, Doc, come here a second now. Shut up. I need your brother. I Don't call me something. brother. I'm not a brother of yours. Indeed. Doctor, go ahead. Indeed is what he says about McMahon and these other guys, the promoters screwing around with these guys. Is this true? Let me tell you something. If there was... Shut up. I need your brother. I Don't call you me something. brother. I'm not a brother of yours. Indeed. Doctor, go ahead. Indeed is what he says about McMahon and these other guys, the promoters screwing around with these guys, is this true? Let me tell you something. 
if there was a union in professional wrestling where a guy had to get up and show some wrestling holds, guys like him would never get in wrestling in the first place. Oh, guys like this guy right here wouldn't get in wrestling in the yeah, first place. Right? Because I'm going to tell you why right now. Schultz was in Atlanta, 1975, 1976. I was in Charlotte. You were on top. I was training Tony Atlas. His first week in wrestling, he made $900. Why I made four. Why he got that? pushed because was he was black. You oh, got no. pushed because you were black, and I was a better wrestler than you, which is reverse right, right, discrimination, right, okay. and I didn't get okay. the job because you were black. And Tony Ellis made that money, it was because Tony Ellis was their boy. Was their boy? Is, is he telling the truth? Come on, is he Who telling started? the truth? He was Who a talented started? athlete Who, that he was, was a professional bodybuilder. He was a talented and athlete. He wrestled. He was a professional bodybuilder. And I trained him. I know well, who who you trying to tell me? Wait a second. Because you were trying to tell me. Are you trying to tell me that every black man who makes it makes it because he kisses the white man's? That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, but it's a lie. Else? Let me give you some facts about that. Right I never, got the largest got wrestling school did. in the world. They and Baby it. Schultz has got a school, and he can tell you, right. I get 1%. That's one black man out of a hundred tries out to be a professional wrestler. Maybe if they had a little it's, bit more guts and intestinal fortitude, wait a second, wait they would come down right. and wait try right. out. Wait a second. Is the reason that they don't try out because they know they're not going to get a fair shake? They'll Nick get a clean. fair uh, shake in professional like, wrestling as they will in any other big business what, what, or in any what, other you, sport. You, you this guy's crying just you, like when... Uh, down in Texas, when Tony Dorsett signed for the biggest contract in the world, Herschel Walker no, comes no, in, play. gets more no, money, now Dorsett's crying. He if he play. didn't like what he was getting, he shouldn't have took it with or without the other yeah, guy. That's, right. that's a bunch of bull. No. How about all these guys who are trying out professional football? Spring, spring no. training, they get tight. You hear them crying? Jim and I, we're here. We're out of place. Yeah, oh, you yeah, are, you're right. You're out of place. Yeah, right. You're right. You're out of place. You're out of place. Wait, 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 wait. I was watching basketball wait, wait, wait. the other night. I didn't see a white man wait, wait, wait. on the court. You don't see me out there hollering. Right. You don't hear me doing it. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying. Let me let me say the same what I'm saying. It's a two-way street. Because you got brother. there. I'm gonna say this here regardless. It's just like Jesse Jackson. Oh, We're not going to turn this into a racial circus just because he wants to. No, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. It's not because I want to. I'm telling you the facts. I'm telling you what happened down the, uh, the whole line. And when you got individuals like this here, wrestling is a white man's business. Oh, 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 let me say one thing. Let me say one thing. Let me say one thing. Go ahead, doctor. Why don't you tell them about 1970s? Why don't you tell them about when you come out on an interview and you're talking about God was going to the ring with you every night? Why don't you tell them about talking about that all the time? No, 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 I got you one of them. You want somebody to give you something. Who do you you're think black. You're, you? you're black. You don't want to work. You don't want to work. You just like to wait a second. 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 Doctor, no, no way, no way anyone's going to indict all the blacks that they don't want to work. That's bull. That's bull. You're right. I got a lot of blacks. You got it. Just a minute, David. Just a minute, you got the blacks, you got the Bobo Brazils, you got That's the right. Ernie Lead, you got the blacks that are good, honest, respectable people. But then you got you? the renegade blacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's this guy right here. He's the only one getting indicted and he's bringing it up. So I'm telling you, he wasn't worth the job that he had and he said he worked for 15 bucks a night, he was overpaid. That's right. Hey, Mark, hey, Mark, Mark. Next, we'll, we'll let our audience ask some questions and see if we can pin any of these guys down. Slammer, get out of here.
Oh, Lil, yes, if wrestling is supposed to be real, why doesn't Las Vegas take action on it? Why doesn't Los Angeles take action on yeah, it? They did in the Andre fight. They Andre Hogan. They, they turned did. around certain people and take action on it. Certain people call it sports entertainment. Anything you want to say. I say they overmatch, which I do admit to. Another, they an, overmatch. Another question. Answer. Before every match, it's an exhibition. Why? You want to call it an exhibition? There are plenty of matches that go in the ring. Hold on, I got the answer. I played exhibition basketball. Wasn't fair. Teddy, Teddy, football Teddy, football Teddy, 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 football Teddy, professional exhibition football. Teddy, let me ask you a minute. Wait a minute. Teddy. We'll be back in just You're a second. One. Get this camera on. We'll be back in a minute. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. Wait a second. Let me ask Jim what this picture is here. Hold that picture up. Camera, can you see that? Camera, get that picture. That's a picture. Turn the camera on. It's get Jim and his mother. He's out of the Got mask. It? All right. Okay. Who is it? Jimmy that Carter? A, that's a picture of the President of the United States of America. Okay. He's the former, former president. Former. Right. Reagan's former. president now. Former. That's right. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me right. quick. We don't have okay. much time. He's got a stranglehold on a guy that I was in the business with the very first time I got in. So what? So what I'm trying to say is we are in the process of unmasking the politics of pro wrestling. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Hey, what happens when, is, when I see, when I, wait a second, when I see pictures of Jimmy yeah, Carter like that, that, it makes me wish I was a basketball player so I could have slam dunked him. <laughs> Doc. Okay, I just want to. I want to say. Minute, hey, I want to say one what? thing. First thing, while ago, this man said that I was prejudiced. I'm not prejudiced. Right now, I'm a professional bounty hunter. I go and pick up criminals off the street, and they're white. They're white. They're garbage, and I lock them up and I take them to jail, just like I do the black man, the Puerto Rican, Chinese, Japanese. I don't care. And they're out here arguing and bitching about somebody kicked them out of the business. I was put under the business. Nobody wants to use me. You want to wrestle him? him. I you want to wrestle him? him. You want to wrestle him? I want you you want to wrestle him? I want Wait a second. You want to wrestle him? I want him. Under the street. I want him. Get the money to wrestle him. Get the money to that match. You and me. You want to wrestle him to see some of the meanest, nastiest villains around today. You know what? You gotta love them. Doesn't matter whether it's real or fake. At least in the world of wrestling, unlike the world we live in, the bad guys aren't killing anyone. I'll see you, guys.